especially in a bull market, you don't short uh, into the hole. It's, you know, again, if you've been watching this broadcast for a long, long time, it's one of the biggest no-nos. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody ever had a good uh, day of trading. I got a couple of minutes and then I have uh, to go to my son's uh, high school basketball game. So hopefully uh, we can talk about some things. So before we get started as normal guys, uh, we do really appreciate your uh, contributions, your input, uh, more important, your support. If you could be so kindly, uh, like, share, and for all anybody who is new to this channel, please subscribe uh, to get updated when we are going uh, upload, right? I think that's the best way of saying it. Social Media Dan is in the house. So let's talk about the tape. Uh, again, classic uh, bull market uh, action. Uh, we'll use the NASDAQ 100 or the QQQs. Uh, as a point of reference. Again, uh, this is exactly what bull market actions are. You have violent moves, especially after a reclaiming of the 50-day moving average. You'll go up three, four days. You'll have a swift reversal like we did see on January the 18th to hold back the 50-day to reclaim it and start again. And you'll have a lot of days that you're going to see very, very aggressive runs followed by inside days. And that's exactly what we saw uh, today, right? After 200, uh, two, after two consecutive days of 200 plus points in the NASDAQ. We finally uh, rested today. Uh, NASDAQ did incredibly well. Forget about the scoreboard. Uh, you know, the Dow's up 100 today. Uh, we really don't care about the Dow. The S&P down three points and the NASDAQ down 30. That's a beautiful, beautiful inside day because it really shows you the strength of the market and anybody who shorted the market today at the open, uh, once they saw uh, news of AMD got downgraded, it's gonna bring down this, it's gonna bring down that. The only thing it's gonna bring down uh, is your uh, is your PL and unfortunately uh, your uh, net equity because again, especially in a bull market, you don't short uh, into the hole. It's, you know, again, if you've been watching this broadcast for a long, long time, it's one of the biggest no nos, especially in a bull market, especially after uh, two consecutive days of aggressive buying. They're just going to come and swoop by. And any anything that is rising 60 minute support, uh, that's what's going to happen. So anything that was super strong over the last couple of days is going to get bit up, is going to get defended. So, for example, Tesla today, right? Tesla had a great run. Uh, here was your day two. Here's what, exactly what I'm talking about, right? So Tesla gap down uh, about, you know, three points or so right into rising support. These are all fake wicks. And a lot of you guys are going to see a lot of fake wicks today on all your charts. Apparently, um, the New York Stock Exchange had a lot of issues opening a lot of their securities, like 20, 30 stocks uh, that were halted, uh, volatility halt at the same time, and it kind of affected the prints on a lot of NASDAQ uh, names as well. So if you're seeing a lot of these weird prints, uh, I can assure you Tesla never got down to 134, but you'll see a lot of these wicks uh, on your charts. Hopefully they'll clean them up by tomorrow across all platforms. But you can see what I'm talking about, right? They trapped, they trapped the shorts right at the bottom of the range here. You see this whole rising wedge? That's the whole point of the rising support. It trapped. Tesla went right the green, ran up about $3. Same thing that happened in NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA had a monster, monster move yesterday. It did exactly the same thing. Again, just follow this follow this um, brown line, right? It touched here uh, yesterday. It touched here again, trapped, went red to green. Uh, NVIDIA was at one, one point up two, two and a half dollars on the day before it kind of, before itself and Tesla kind of rested, uh, you know, up 50 cents, up 17 cents respectively. But more important is we are starting to get into the earnings season, right? We're starting to get into the sweet spot of the earnings season. Uh, last week, you had uh, Netflix come out with earnings. Again, the whole big thing, they missed, but their subscribers, it doesn't matter. In a bull market, a lot of things get negated, a lot of things get thrown under the rug, and sentiment sometimes takes over. So unless a company is gonna turn around and say, chapter 11, chapter 11, they're gonna negate, right? They're gonna negate, right? They're gonna negate, and the sentiment is gonna take the stock higher. And if you see what's going on today uh, with Microsoft after the close, right? You have a nice little pop, well, not more than a little pop, you get a 4% rise uh, in Microsoft. Does it make a difference what they said? Uh, well, let's see here. Microsoft beats on earnings, cloud units, 
shows growth strength. And, and that's the key word, Crowd, uh, cloud unit shows growth strength. And not only does that affect Microsoft, it affects names like uh, Amazon, right? Amazon, it's kind of giving you a little bit of a preview uh, what might happen next week when they, uh, pref uh, when they report. Obviously, uh, Amazon makes uh, a good chunk of money from their a uh, Amazon Web Services. Uh, so this is a pretty good, or at least a sneak peek of what its quarter could look like as well. And not only Amazon, you have the other traditional cloud names. You got uh, Snow uh, getting a bump, uh, Crowdsource, all these names, right? All these names getting a little bit bump uh, after the close. So the most important thing is, is this going to spill over and carry over to tomorrow? And again, if you are uh, a, a big believer in technical analysis, you, you kind of see where the cues are. If you look, see where the cues are uh, trading, uh, trading after the close, they're trading right at the previous day's highs. You see that? This 90-21 area, right? So they're trading right at this 90-21 area. So if the cues tomorrow can start reclaiming and start building over that 90 290 90 area, then you have a potential move going all the way up to the December 13 highs of 296, uh, 297. Look, are you going to get some bumps in the road here and there in the market? Absolutely. Like I said all the time, you're not going to go straight up. Every stock, no matter how strong it is, it's not going to go straight up. But the whole theme, right? The whole uh, mantra of the market is strength, 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 pullback, strength, 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 pullback, off and on, off and on, off and on. Uh, tomorrow, obviously, the big, uh, the big name, at least for uh, us who trade beta, is Tesla. Tesla has been uh, behaving incredible, absolutely incredible uh, for the last three days. You saw every single level get taken out. Today, they price improved. They bought the channel. They bought the dip. They took out the previous day's high. This high is closed in this whole formation. Uh, again, we are seeing pretty big bets coming in on Tesla. Again, nobody knows, right? I don't know what's going to happen. Happen on Tesla the same way I don't know I didn't know what's going to happen on Microsoft I didn't know how this I don't know that it's just guessing you could sit there and, and dissect the company with a fine tooth cone you could have the information you could literally have uh, the earnings right in front of you you just still don't know how the stock is going to react based on uh, the bullish activity you could turn around to Tesla on Apple on uh, AMD on Google on Amazon and everything else in between and say I'm betting on the upside I'm betting on the upside and eventually if you you know if you if you kind of uh, separate uh, all the winners and losers and we're still in a bullish sentiment uh, still continuing to build above the 50-day moving average you're probably going to hit on more stocks beating numbers than missing but the most important part is the price action you could have a stock that misses on top misses on bottom and have a 20 25 percent rally the next day and vice versa you could have a stock that beats uh the, the top and bottom lines and go down 15 10 percent so it, it it's all about price action that's the most important thing so before tomorrow you sit there for six hours debating with joe blow at I'm the best trader.com for six hours, whether Tesla's gonna to go to zero, it's gonna to go to the moon, just realize number one, nobody cares, you're wasting your time. You should really allocate your time to kind of making yourself uh, a better trader, a better human being, or just kind of really allocate uh, some time or just hell, get a hobby because you have way too much time in your hands if you are fighting with random people online of an event that you have no control of, that you have an opinion like everybody else, but absolutely have zero idea uh, what the absolute outcome is gonna be. We'll see, right? The options market right now is betting uh, the 150s, the 155s, the 160s. We will see if Tesla uh, by you know, the same time tomorrow uh, will have uh, a really, really good effect and start testing the top of the channel here. Or is Elon Musk going to pull one of those scenarios that, hey, you know what? I don't know. I don't know how great this quarter is. And next thing you know, we're, we're, we're having this conversation uh, below 120 again. Again, we have no idea, but the only thing we could do uh, is get ready. The most in, in, intriguing part, I think, about today's trading session was the same thing over and over again. You have strong stocks despite the weakness uh, yesterday, right? Excuse me, the, despite the weakness this morning, they were perking up really, really well. Again, we talked about in the video, we talked about Tesla, uh, we talked about even names like NET, right? Even names like NET that we talked about uh, last night on the video. I mean, look at the move here on the 60 minute channel right off the open. I mean, you had a big, big pop uh, before it sold off. And now again, it's still getting uh, it's still getting the aftershock of Microsoft's earnings. You know, you have a lot of really nice moves and that's what an orderly bull market is. I, I think the biggest problem, especially a lot of new traders, you've never seen 
you've ever seen both a bear and a bull market. So when you go through a whole year of stocks being sold, 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 you're skeptical over everything. You know, stock goes up more than one day. It's like, oh, this won't last. The market's overbought. How can the market be overbought, right? Again, it's another scenario. How can the market be overbought if we're three days uh, three days into reclaiming the, the 50 day moving average. It's the same time as when somebody said to me, you know, we, we, we closed uh, below the August lows here in the 50 day, the market's oversold. How can we be oversold if, if you, have a, you, have, you have a range 30 points lower? So just guys, just remember, take it day by day, trade by trade. You don't need to be smart, right? I, I've, I have an old saying that I've been saying for years. You don't gotta be the smartest trader in the room. You don't gotta be the best trader in the room, right? Just don't be the dumbest, right? Don't be the dumbest. Don't try to, uh, uh, you know, oppose your, you know, put your will on somebody else. Try to convince somebody. Trade the stocks you feel comfortable with. Trade the stocks you know and love and respect, and they love and respect you back, and everything will be uh, okay. Is every single stock beating numbers tonight? No. You got Texas Instruments. Uh, you got Texas Instruments. Kind of a, you know, kind of a flat. Uh, muted reaction. You can see here, uh, stock is flat after the close. And ISRG, that usually does have um, some pretty good quarters, not so much this time, right? Not so much this time as well. So the most important thing that I'm taking out of this uh, out of this session was we had some pretty good action, especially off the open. Again, Nvidia, Tesla, NET, uh, even a stock Mara, for God's sake, right? Even Mara, uh, you know, here's talking about an interesting stock. They, were, they, were, they came for the stock right around here in the 880s. They were coming for the January 1st. They were coming for the March 15 calls. All, you know, all they were expecting to do, one after another, um, was literally almost double in about two months. And the stock had a nice 60, 70 cent pop uh, before the stock kind of came in a little bit. But that's what the market is. It's, it's still driven uh, by speculation money. It's still driven by option flow. And the most important part is it's still driven by bullish sentiment. Will Tesla disappoint? Will Tesla continue this uh, bull parade tomorrow? To be continued, right? Everybody have a great night. God bless. Uh, again, for all you guys who are uh, interested in trading pivots, again, guys, there's a link below. I'm sure we, I, Kyler posted uh, every night. You know, test drive the webinar for uh, uh, 30 days. It's pretty cool, man. The pivots are pretty cool. Um, you, it, you just need to believe in technical analysis. You need to have a pair of eyes, right, to kind of see all the price action. And the most important thing is you have to open up and try to be embraced technical analysis. And that's the number one rule. Guys, have a great night. God bless. And I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.